one of the sales producers sold a life insurance policy probably about um, two or three months prior to me stepping in and um, they had just got word that the individual that was um, that had came into the office and got a life insurance policy on it just passed away right mm. a few months just a few months removed from coming in having a conversation letting them know hey it's important to have a life insurance policy end up passing away and now we're able to talk to the family about a death benefit that's left behind Ron, thanks for joining us today, man. I really appreciate it, and it's uh, good to see you. Likewise, man. Uh, glad to be on here with you. Thanks for the invite. So this has been a, a long time coming. I know I've been thinking about having you on this this show, and just want to you know pick your brain and just learn some insights from you. And I've been been delaying, <laughs> but I'm glad we're here today. Yeah, it's all good, man. I mean, timing is perfect, I believe. So it's 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 no delay. It's at the right time. Perfect timing. Absolutely. So Jabron, if you can just, uh, and, and maybe let me just, um, before we start here, just so the audience knows, we know each other, we go to the same church, um, well aware of, of the, the the good things that Jabron has done in the community, um, what he's doing through his business. I've sent family over to to come talk to him and he's, he's a great dude. And I think it's important to, that we have this conversation, um, not only about just like life insurance, but just talking about um, life in general. So Javon's a wealth of wisdom, and uh, I know that you guys are going to benefit from this. So just to lead us off, Javon, just tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, you know, where, where you're from, and just uh, anything that you want to share uh, about your background. I was born and raised here in the city of Las Vegas. Uh, 42 and a half years, coming up on 43, so spent most of my life here in Las Vegas. Um, graduated high school actually right, uh, literally probably 10 minutes away from where my office is right now. I didn't plan it that way, but that's how things kind of worked out. Um, uh, so I grew up here in Las Vegas, went to high school, graduated high school here, and while I was in high school, I had a, um, uh, a real encounter with God, man, and, and that changed my whole trajectory, changed my whole life. I had a plan of where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. And, and when God came into my life, he changed all of that up. And uh, I said, God, I'll, I'll go wherever you want me to go, do whatever you want me to do, and decided to, to be obedient to him, uh, first and foremost. Um, and uh, he led me, went to Bible college. He led me to Bible college, uh, spent some time in Bible college here in Las Vegas, and then uh, ended up moving to Northern California, um, Sacramento, actually Elk Grove, right south of Sacramento. Um, I was um, blessed to be invited to come up uh, to join a staff that planted a church in Elk Grove, California. The church is still in existence today, still thriving, still growing. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of the inception of that church and helping to get it off the ground. So that was a blessing for me. I spent almost four and a half, almost five years up in Northern California until um, I connected with my wife, my now wife. And uh, she was like, man, I'm not moving to California. So uh, I had to make a decision, man, to move back to Las Vegas. But I really believe that it was it was God in that as well, leading me um, back to my hometown, um, to Las Vegas. And uh, shortly after I moved back to Las Vegas, um, uh, ended up not being in full time ministry, which was I felt God's plan. Ended up getting a sales position at a, at a company that I worked at for about eight years. Um, and saw some amazing things happen there at, at, at the company I was at, but ended up getting married shortly after I moved back, probably about a year after I moved back uh, to my now wife. Um, we have three beautiful children who are now in school as of today. Praise God. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. School. And uh, so I, uh, my professional career, like I said, I spent eight years at this sales company um, uh, working uh we sold aftermarket af aftermarket diagnostic software to technicians and, and repair shops to fix fix vehicles. Um, and and I learned a lot in, in the sales process working at, at this job. I learned a, learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about other people who I was selling to, uh, personality types, all that. Uh, but I think the biggest thing I, I gleaned was the fact that that God still wanted to use me outside of church, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I was licensed for ministry, licensed minister, licensed pastor. But no longer in full time ministry, but God, you know, specifically he, he impressed on me not to take that hat off. Right. That that's who I was. That wasn't just something I did, but that was who I was. So we actually started a Bible study there at, at, at that company and saw many people come to know the Lord. We saw many people get saved, healed, delivered, transformed, all in the setting of, of 
you know, an office space, you know, a marketplace. And um, it was an incredible experience because of that. I learned so many things from that that time at the job, but that was the greatest thing I think I, I gleaned from there. And then I worked at other sales positions, several sales positions since then until um, I would say probably mid 2020, God spoke to me to leave a job that I had been at for about five years. Um, it was another sales position with an industrial company that I was selling for. And this is a type of company where if you work hard, you build up your accounts. I don't want to say you could put it on autopilot, but you know, your work will, will uh, in, in its essence, um, uh, you know, you'll, you'll reap the benefits from the, the hard work you put in. So I was at a place where I was, my accounts had grown and I was seeing, you know, uh, increased income from that. And it was a little bit getting comfortable. Right. And, and, and God was like, uh, nope, uh, I, I'm going to shift gears on you. Um, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to do something that you've never done before. You have no context for. So I was like, okay, God, if, you know, I, I've trusted you, you know, most of my whole life. So, so I trust you with this. And I had to consult with my wife and we talked about it, prayed about it. And uh, it was um, going into the conversation with her. It was it was a big step because there was a sacrifice involved. Like I wouldn't be making as much as I had made over the course of time. You know, my, my professional sales career, we'd be taking a major state step back financially just to pursue what God. And I felt like God was showing us. And, you know, she came in agreement with me. And that was my sign that, that God was in it. That if she was if she would say yes, then we're, we're fully in. And the, the more we said yes to God, the more he began to open doors to walk down this path. And I mean, it, it seemed like it seemed like, you know, every little thing I did, um, every little every step that I put in front of the other, God just confirmed that he was in it. Um, while I was at my previous job, I ended up studying while I was there to get my property casualty license um, just to to be in the insurance world. You need to have at least that. So I got that. And by the time. I resigned from that position. I had my license and I was able to jump fully into to working in insurance. Um, so I was at a, a, another agency for about a year, year and a half um, until I, I finally felt you know, ready and felt the green light from God to to step into agency ownership. Um, and that brought me to uh, mid midpoint last year where July 1st, 2022, I, I was able to acquire an agency here with the insurance company that I work for. And um, it's been a year. Um, we just came up on our year anniversary and uh, not without challenge, not without sacrifice, but it's really, truly been an amazing journey, man. Truly a blessing from God. Um, I've grown so much in, in leadership. Um, I, I, obviously, sales is something that I've learned, you know, being in the marketplace for the last, I want to say, 15, 16 years. But in this position, you know, I'm able to lead a team, able to lead a staff and and all the stuff that has, you know, been instilled in me over, you know, many years, I'm able to now walk in that and see that, you know, uh, see that come out and and uh, see that perfected. So it's been awesome, man. It's been a, a cool journey. So that's where I am now, uh, agency ownership within the insurance world and and uh, looking to grow, looking to do some great things. And, uh, you know, thanks to you, you helped me, you helped me uh, get in the office. The, I want to say I, I, I wouldn't have any... Um, internet connectivity access without without you uh you know helping me out man so i appreciate you you you're you played a integral part of um us even being open and doing what we're doing so i appreciate that but yeah that's that's my story in a nutshell so all right yeah glad to be a small part of the story and it's it's definitely um wild just to think about you stepping out on faith and then saying hey god go ahead and take this and just you know, heeding that call and then just watching those doors and those opportunities open up and come your way. So, and I, I would imagine too, it's probably scarier as you're going through it versus looking back on it now, like, oh, okay, like it was supposed to work out this way, but I could, I can only imagine how tough it it, it was during that time in the uh, initial phases leading up to where you're at right now. Yeah, um, I think fear, man, fear is. It's kind of what holds a lot of people back and and even people with great faith, man, they're, they're not void or devoid of fear, right? Even some of the greatest, even we read about in the Bible, you know, had, had moments where they walk through uh, uncertainty and, and you know, uh, moments of anxiety, worry and fear, right? Um, so I think the, the greatest part of faith, though, is still being able to move forward despite how you feel or despite what's going on in your mind. You know, for me, it's like I don't have all the answers. I don't know how this is going to turn out. And for a lot of people, they're like, man, I, 
I, I want to have it mapped out from A to Z. And if I don't have that, I, I can't move forward. I can't I can't even start the journey if I don't know how this is going to play out. Right. And there's that risk element, you know, but really with God, like, you know, I've grown so much in my relationship with God. With me, it really is no risk. If God says do it, you know, for me, I'm not taking a risk because I have a hundred. I can bet the house on God fulfilling what he's going to fulfill. Do I know what he's going to fulfill? Do I, do I know how it's going to look <laughs> once it's all finished? I don't. But I, I can trust that it's going to be good. Right. At the end of the day, what he calls me to, if I'm just obedient to follow him, it's going to be good. Right. Um, he's never failed me. He's never, never let me down. I was telling one of my staff members um, today, I was I was just encouraging her uh, was a brand new staff member. We just hired her. And I was telling her I, I've been following God um, about 27 years. If I can calculate it right, about 27 years since I fully gave my life to the Lord. I said not one moment in those 27 years has God failed me one time. <laughs> you know, so when you have a track record like that, it's not hard to follow God blindly with a yes. Right. Um, you know, I've been through some hard times. I've been through some some difficult things. I've, I've lost some family members, lost my own father, you know. But even through all of that, you know, God has been faithful. He has never once failed me. So so there is a little bit of fear. But I think what I've the track record that I have with God and how faithful he's been, it kind of trumps that. Right. And I think it, if you don't have that track record with God, if you don't have that faithfulness, uh, that track record to depend on either either via yourself or via maybe somebody that's close to you. Oh, my mom trusted you and she's she was always taken care of. Well, my grandmother, I know she always put her trust in you. And God, God, I know you always took care of her. If you don't have that track record to look at, it's harder, you know, to move forward and make decisions. You have a whole world that's uncertain, you know, and uh, absolutely you may be full of fear. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's that's actually an awesome segue into what I want to talk into next, which is we're, we're talking about, I want to dive into the, the life insurance piece because your agency deals with all types of insurance, but in particular life insurance. So if you're, if we're, if we're thinking about life insurance, it's one of those things where we often think about putting it off at the, you know, to the very, very last minute. So what would you say to somebody that's looking to dive into this world of life insurance, you know, how, how would you, how would you guide them? And, you know, and why not just put this off until to later? Well, life insurance is one of those things where it's, it's going to cost you more the later that you wait, right? It, when you finally realize how valuable it is and how much, not only that you need it, but maybe that those you love or maybe depend on you need it, it's going to cost more. So there's a cost of waiting. We call it a cost of waiting in sales. And especially with insurance, especially with life insurance, because the older you get, the, the greater your risk of dying. You know, insurance is rated on risk, you know. So the lesser the risk, the lower the, the premium, the lower the payment you're going to pay. But the higher the risk, you're going to be looking at paying a higher premium. And the older you get, you know, we that life insurance is, is probably the only policy that has 100 percent claims payout, which means that if you got a policy in place and it's if it's in place at the time you die it's going to pay out you may have an auto insurance policy pay on it for 20 years and never use it you may have a home insurance policy pay on it for 20 30 years and never have to file a claim ever but uh, claims paid out on life insurance is 100 percent right mm. um so when you think about uh your loved ones your family members dependents um maybe grandchildren what you want to leave a legacy to um uh, uh, who you want to leave a legacy to it, it means something. You know, I, I grew up in a family where generational wealth really wasn't talked about. You know, I have family members pass away and it's like, okay, we got to figure out what we need to do now to collect money and go work extra or do whatever we can just to take care of their final arrangements where it mm. shouldn't be like that. Right. It should be, you know, uh, it should be literally wealth passed on from generation to generation to set the next generation up to be better off than you were. And that's 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 a whole train of thought that maybe that's not inherent maybe in our community, in a lot of communities I see. But my job as, as an agent is to help change that, is to help educate individuals on the value of, you know, leaving a legacy for your family. Because there's a lot of communities within America that have that concept and you see them, they flourish, right? From generation to generation. Why can't our people group or any people group that don't have that instilled in them, why can't they grow to a place where their, you know, their their next generations are more prosperous than them. I just heard a statistic actually yesterday it was so crazy because I'm in the world of, of life insurance, um, not just for the part of leaving a legacy after you die, but it's also a living benefit, right? A lot of wealthy people 
they have life insurance policies, not for a death benefit, but for a tax advantage. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a statistic yesterday that um, two large companies in America, uh, McDonald's and Disney, uh, both owners borrowed from a life insurance policy to scale their business as they were they were as they were growing right to get it off the ground to get it to the place they wanted it to, to be they had life insurance policies in place that they were able to take money out of tax free right to grow their business so there's a lot that goes into a life insurance policy that the general public that they're not even aware of you know and, and maybe you know by default the government may not want you to know all the different benefits and different places you can put your money to have an advantage but there's so much um, that can be taken from a life insurance policy that will benefit you. And, uh, you know, since I've been in this role, I just felt this the need so much to to want to educate me and my family, you know, and, and individuals in our community, individuals outside of our community. Um, I'll, I'll give you one short analogy uh, or one short story. And then and I'll, uh, before I move on, before we move on, when I first got in this agency, right, it had been probably a couple weeks um, because this agency existed before me. I acquired it. And so there was um, uh, sales producers already in the agency. They decided to stay on with me. And one of the sales producers sold a life insurance policy probably about um, two or three months prior to me stepping in. And um, so when I was there for a couple of weeks, where they had just got word that the individual that was um, that had came into the office and got a life insurance policy on had just passed away. Right. Mm. A few months, just a few months removed from coming in, having a conversation with my sales producer, them letting them know, hey, it's important to have a life insurance policy. They got a life insurance policy, end up passing away. And now we're able to talk to the family about a death benefit that's left behind. Right. That's wow. tax free. They don't have to pay taxes on it. Now you have enough money to, to bury the one that you love. You're already grieving. You're already going through all these emotions. You don't have to try to w worry about coming up with money. There's money for you and some left over to take care of some other stuff. Maybe, you know, put invest in some other things or maybe leave it for some, some kids education, you know, and it's those type of conversations that are so fulfilling. It's hurtful when, when somebody passes away and they don't have anything. Right. And then you got to try to figure out, you know, after the fact, but I love having those conversations with individuals when there's something left over. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I know for myself, when I was looking into this life insurance stuff a long time ago, it's, it's almost, you almost get the sense that, okay, now I'm, I'm thinking and talking about this, like something's going to happen and I'm going to die. So maybe that's yeah. part of the reason why we're just like, let me just yeah. not put it off because I don't want anything bad happen to me be, before yeah. this actually happens. Do you, it's like do you a get taboo, that quite right? a bit? It's like yeah. a taboo. Yeah. So certain communities, um, uh, my my agency is bilingual and one of her, my producers is uh, a Hispanic. Right. And she, uh, you know, expressed to me that it's one of the taboos in the Hispanic community. Like you know, maybe not for everybody, but for a good majority, it's like if the moment you bring up life insurance, like something's bound to happen. Right. Yeah. You know, knock on wood. Don't don't mention that because, you know, that's going to attract something bad and you're going to no, 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 no. That's not at all. I mean, I, I got my first life insurance policy when I was in my early 30s. Right. I put a term policy in, in place. Um, when me and my wife were newly wet, uh, married and had our first child, I realized that if something happened to me, I'm the main provider. I want to put something in place for them. I'm almost, uh, what, 12, 13 years removed from that. Nothing's happened to me. Right? <laughs> so, you know, it's just a taboo. It's just something that we think in our minds and, you know, uh, you know, a, a misconception on, on, you know, the topic of life insurance. We need to approach that idea. We need to have the conversation and that's not going to attract anything negative to you. So, you know, I'm convinced that, that God has us here on this earth for a time and a season, right? We're, God says he has every day planned in his book. He knows how long we're going to be here. We don't. We're the only ones that don't, right? So whether it's uh, 20 years from now or whether it's 100 years from now, or whether it's five days from now, I want to make sure I have something in place for when he does call me home and I'm not going to be here anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good words of encouragement and, and wisdom with that. Also good to know, too, that we're not alone um, in our thinking, regardless of the community or the, the age or, 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 or place. One thing that you mentioned, um, when you're talking about your, your walk with, with God was the, the track record as far as him, him never, never failing you and you're able to trust him along the way. So maybe you could talk about the, the track record that individuals need to look at as far as, um, working with an agency or another, um, entity when it comes to, um, offering these types of services, how, how important is that? And what, what kind of advice can you give us as far as looking for like an agency that you can trust? 
Uh, I would say first and foremost, um, when you're looking at insurance, um, you want to make sure that your insurance company is represented by, the, by an agent. Um, not every insurance company is represented by an agent. Like I'm an agent, I'm a physical brick and mortar location here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, all my clients can come in and have a conversation with me, sit down. We could talk about life. We could talk about their policies, which I invite my clients to do on a regular basis. Um, I go out to my clients' homes. You know, I, I sit down, I visit with them, I go over their coverages. So you're not going to get that with every insurance company first off. Um, not that every insurance company that doesn't have an agent is bad. It's just that you don't have that representation. Representation mm -hmm. is huge. It's important when it when it comes to, you know, filing a claim, when it comes to getting service, when it comes to discounts, when it comes to rate increases. We're living in an age of rate increases where inflation is affecting everything. So when you have a rate increase, you under, understand why you can't put sense together. Who is your go between to break it down for you and explain to you why your policy went up 23 percent, 25 percent? Um, or if you have a claim, God forbid, you know, you hope you never need to file a claim on anything you've got. But if you got to file a claim, who's the go between between you and the claims adjuster? Because they they have a job to do. Right. The claims adjusters, they want to make sure that there's if there is a payout, that there, there's not a maximum amount of payout available. Sorry to say, with some companies, they're going to look for the minimum, the most minimum amount of payout they can give a client because, you know, insurance companies are for profit. They're not nonprofit entities. You know, they need to <laughs> they true. need to make money and stay in business. So you you got to have an advocate. You got to have a representative to go between you, claims adjusters, um, even service um, service operations of your company. Somebody that knows you, not somebody that you're going to get a different person every time you call the 800 number. Mm. Right. You got a problem. You call 800 number. You talk to somebody. You talk to Fred. You never talk to Fred before. You probably never talk to Fred again. He does have no vested interest in your well-being. <laughs> Right. He yeah. wants to he wants to service you, but he doesn't know you. He's probably all the way on the other side of the country or maybe in another country altogether. So I would say that's probably the first thing you want to look for is track record rapport. Get to have get to know the agent that's representing you. If you don't have one, maybe look for a company that has an agent. Right. That that could be a good one. And also reviews. Online reviews are huge. You know, if they've been in business for any amount of time, there should be some reviews uh, on on either a Google or a Yelp. Um, you know, you can go to some various platforms. You're probably you probably a little bit more savvy at that than I am, Jamal. But, uh, you know, just doing a simple online search and finding, you know, what other customers have thought of, you know, the company or agent you're working with that if that if that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, some some good, solid advice and um, definitely something to keep in mind on on that search. So maybe let's talk a little bit more about. Um, some of the the drivers for you to move into this space I, I know faith was was one of those things but have you ever considered um being like a business owner prior to um stepping into this role right now so yeah i uh, i have i have um so so funny man uh like <laughs> everything in my life man just kind of flows together right so i remember as a little kid right my father he would always talk to me about uh, him starting a business, right? That was his thing. Like I would hear that, I would hear that till I was blue in the face. And uh, my dad always worked to try to make that happen. I could always see my dad work to try to make that happen, right? You know, he would, uh, you know, try to get certifications and try to do certain things, trying to gain experience in this area and try to, you know, move forward, gain relationships in this area. But to the day he passed away, I don't know that he was ever a certified quote unquote business owner, right? But that's something that he always instilled in me, you know, by his vision, you know, I'm going to I'm going to start a business and then I'm going to pass it down to you. You're going to inherit what I work on. You're going to you and your, your sisters, you guys are going to get a piece of of the business that I help that, that I start and that I build. And it's uh, so my father passed away in 2019. And it's so funny, the exit that I get off of pretty much every morning, the exit I get off of the freeway, there's a, a Mountain View Hospital right there at that exit. I see that hospital and my dad passed away. And every time I get off the freeway to go to my office, and that's a reminder of my dad's vision, right? Of what he wanted his life. And it's now coming to fruition in my life. Right. Wow. And even though my dad, want, he was, he was so hungry for it and he never saw it come to pass. It wasn't something that I was hungry for. It was just something that was in my, my, my peripheral, right? Something that had been spoken to me in my whole life, but it wasn't something that I was necessarily hungry for. I, I knew I wanted to support my family. I knew I wanted to do the best at whatever I was called to do, but maybe not necessarily hungry to be a business owner. But then 
I would say maybe 10 years ago or so, I kind of got a desire for franchise ownership, right? Like, what if I could own a franchise? And in my mind, I'm thinking like, what if I could own like a, a maybe a fast food franchise, right? You know, buy a fran- fast food franchise, run it, you know, build it up, maybe buy a couple of those and go from there. What would that look like? And I actually attempted to get into some franchises but some of them are extremely hard to get into. You got to have Absolutely. a lot of capital. You know, you got to have a lot of clout. You got to have a lot of experience. You got to serve in that organization for a number of years, go through their university, do, do A, B, C, have all these degrees. And some of them are not, but some of them are. Um, and, and I attempted and and it never worked out for me. Right. Never worked out. But still, I felt like that was in my heart. Right. And still never to the point where I pursued it even beyond that. But it, I talked it in conversation with my wife about it. Like one day, what if we own a What if we own a franchise? So continuing to save our money, possibly put us in a position one day to purchase. We're not there yet, but let's just keep going. And even when this opportunity came came about, I didn't didn't even think this this would be a possibility for me to do it at this this stage. Like it's just this is kind of early for me jumping into it. But um, but yeah, so I would say, yeah, that had been kind of like something in my heart and my mind that I had gone over, you know, uh, not tremendously, but some, you know, before I got to this point. So it's interesting how our parents will like drop little seeds for us. And then, you know, we might not take it too seriously, but at some point in later on in life, you know, that seed starts to, starts to take root. And then it's kind of like, where's this coming from? But, you know, yeah. it's like, Oh, okay. My father, or my, my, my parents or some other people in your community were, you know, putting those things out there all along and you just happen to catch the seed at the right time. And it's, you know, starting to flourish at that point. Definitely. Definitely. That's what, that's what the case was. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So for, for people that are, um, and we'll, maybe we'll just focus on the young people here, but so for the, for the younger people that are thinking about this path, whether it's they, they jump into the insurance industry or franchising, like you talked about, you know, what, what are some tips that you can give uh, a younger person uh, and maybe even to go a little bit deeper with that? What, what tips would you give your, your younger version of yourself when it comes to thinking about uh, a life in, with uh, entrepreneurship in mind? I, I would um, just looking at myself, I would say that, that there is a lot that I don't know about this world, but don't let that intimidate you. Right. Um, I feel like there's a lot of people in this space that can do it a whole lot better than me. Right. Uh, maybe that are built for it, quote unquote, built for it. You look at certain individuals like, man, like, man, they're built for this. Right. Or, you know, everything they touch, it just it just explodes. Right. And you see them. But but don't compare yourself to other people, you know, even other people that are doing exactly what you you want to do or aspire to. Maybe look at them and, and learn from them and don't discount yourself. Don't discount your lack of knowledge in an area. Yeah, and, and per, let that prevent you from moving forward in it, right? Because I felt so, I had I had zero knowledge. Only knowledge I, I had about insurance was my own insurance policy, you know, in 20, middle of 2020. I, you know, we're only what, you know, three years removed, three years removed from that. I had zero knowledge other than my own policy, which was very minimal even to begin with. I didn't even know much about my own. I just know I had an insurance policy, right? Like most of us. Um, but I, I didn't let that dis disqualify or discount me from progressing in it, right? Because we always have the ability to learn. We always have the ability to adapt and pick up. And the beauty about it is, is if you're walking down the road, a a road you're walking down or road you want to walk down, chances are there's, there's people that have walked down before that road before you. Chances are there's people that are in your path that are willing to help you. And I, I generally find that if, if it's something that really, you really want to do and it's something that's meant for you to do, something that God has planned for you to do, that there's going to be people that God places in your path to give you a helping hand. There's going to be people that, that God puts in your life to help educate you and show you the ropes and show you things here and there. I was so blown away by when I said, yes, God immediately started throwing people my way that, that was able to add value to, to the path I was walking down, right? So I would say don't don't worry about what you don't have. Don't look at what you don't have, but look at the opportunity that's before you and look at the possibilities of what could be, right? And don't don't minimize yourself because you feel like I'm so small in knowledge here, or even I'm so small in education here. Like I don't have the degrees upon degrees like maybe some people do. Don't look at that. Just just you know follow follow what you feel like's in your heart, the passion and drive that you have is in your heart, 
and, you know, hear from God, hear what God is saying about, you know, the, the calling over you as well. Yeah, great words, great words and great wisdom there with that. So as we wrap things up, Debron, once again, I, I appreciate your time here. So what's, what's one thing that we haven't touched on yet that you'd like to leave with the audience before we uh, conclude this conversation? Oh man, that, I don't, I don't even know. I probably have to think on that for a second. One thing we haven't touched on, um, man, we, we covered life insurance. We covered, uh, <laughs> which is, which is the biggest thing, um, that our agency does. I, I say that, you know, there's, you know, we are an agency that sells auto home, uh, commercial insurance, uh, but the biggest and best thing we sell is life insurance because, uh, that's, that's the one that makes a difference in people's lives. Right. Um, uh, we touched on that already. Um, I would say to um, maybe throw this in there about the money aspect, the finances aspect. Um, that's one thing that comes to a lot of people's minds when it comes to you know business ownership or even uh, launching out, starting something new, taking a risk is you know uh, dollars and cents. Am I, am I going to have enough? Um, and 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 business ownership. Uh, I kind of had a premonition beforehand, but being fully immersed in it, that it is, it is an investment. Like you're making an investment in your own business, not only in time, not only in energy. For example, this past year, um, I made a commitment to myself that, you know, I would spend more hours in my agency than anybody else did. Right. So I, I'm here more than anybody else is I, I feel like I put in more hours, more time than anybody else. Not to, not to say I'm better than anybody else, but this is my business. So I got to be invested in it. So not only time wise, uh, emotionally, mentally, but also financially, you know, there's times where I put money back in my business, right? We think of business ownership, like, Oh, I'm going to make all this money. I'm going to be prosperous, which is, which is partially true. You know, when you get to a certain point, but you know, is, is even at points when you get things started, there's an investment financially. Like there's, there's times where I've had to go into my savings and, and put money back into the business, not only to, to keep it going, but to, to help help it grow, to help it move forward. So I think sometimes that the misconception of what business looks like, especially to people jumping in it, like, hey, know that there's a sacrifice, know that there's a, a, a big piece of yourself you're going to give back, but you will see a return, you know, eventually, sooner or later, you will see a return when you're fully invested. So um, you, you can't be partially invested. You can't be, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent. I feel like you got to be 110 percent invested in what what's before you, whether that's entrepreneur, entrepreneurship or whether th that's um, being a customer service representative, whether that's being a, you know, a, a salesman or a saleswoman at a job, whether it's being a, a, whatever it is, whatever, whether it's being a full time student to be 110 percent fully invested in what you do, because God says, if you're faithful with what I've given you, he says, I'm going to make you I'm going to put you in charge of more. I'm going to give you more to be responsible for so prove to yourself that that you're fully invested. Prove prove to everybody else around you that you're fully invested, and and you're going to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. If I can add that last little bit on there, then, uh, then yeah. So. What was um, impactful with with this whole conversation was just understanding. You know, I, I understood the, the journey. I understand more of the journey. The sacrifice also too was um, incredible, especially with your wife being on board with saying like, hey, like, I believe in this vision, you know, I'm partnering with this, and we're going to believe God together that this is, you know, this is the, the place that we need to go. And that that can certainly be scary when we're like, all right, we got to give up some things that we were used to before. So I think that's probably the, the thing that sticks out to me most about this conversation. And then also too, about what your what your father had dreams to do. And I, I didn't know that part. So I thought that was uh, pretty impactful that you shared that piece. He was a salesman too. He worked in many different fields, but he was a salesman too. But he really wanted to get off the ground, a maintenance company, like like to do maintenance type of work, hire maintenance technicians and service, you know, residential, commercial. But that was kind of his dream, you I know. See. But never, never fully came into fruition. So, but I know that was always in his heart, in his mind. So in the spouse aspect, we realize, you know, we've done this before, you know, together. We've taken a step step back before, but we know when when God calls you to something to take a step forward, you you almost have to take a step back, right? You know the whole scripture verse, you know, to gain your life, you must lose it first, right? So we're not looking to gain first; we're looking to lose first. Mm. Jesus to resurrect, he had to first be crucified first. So that's 
that's even in the plan of salvation. That's the method of the gospel. That's a theme all throughout the Bible, right? Before there can be future gains, there has to be sometimes present losses and present sacrifices. So we didn't, we didn't, we, we came in agreement, but we didn't mind taking a step back, knowing eventually these steps back would propel us forward, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just having a future mindset, right? That, that long-term vision, right? So um, that's kind of like w- what enabled us, empowered us to do that. Otherwise, you'd be like, man, I don't know if we can do that. I don't know if we can, <laughs> you know. And, and, and God has been so faithful to even, even in the steps back, his provision has been there, right? Even in the steps back, like we've never, we've never like lacked, right? We've never gone without a mortgage payment being paid, you know, our, our utilities being paid, our kids still going to school. Our, we're, we still got food in the house. We still got clothes on our back. We still got the basic necessities and some. We're still able to take family. We still are able to do all that stuff, right? Maybe not completely live like we used to but but we don't we don't we're not like you know we're not broken down you know yeah god is not gonna leave us broken down he, he his that desire doesn't is for not to leave us broken down and like you know without anything you know sometimes we think that if we follow god that he, he wants to leave us without anything but that's not his desire so jabron uh once again thanks for your time today uh, let the people know how they can get in touch with you, uh, social media, phone numbers, um, where you're located at. Feel free to drop that. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I could be found on LinkedIn um, under my name, Jabron Thompson. You can find me under LinkedIn, uh, spell my name, J-E-B-R-O-N-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. I also have a Facebook page that's a business Facebook page. I believe it's uh, Thompson Insurance. If you Google Thompson Insurance or just look up Thompson Insurance on Facebook, you'll find me there. I did have a personal page on Facebook, but that one is currently uh, being, it's trying to, you know, somebody got in there and took took over it. So I'm trying to get it back. So don't worry about my personal one for Facebook, but I do have a business page on Facebook as well. I have a Instagram uh, page as well, Jabron Thompson. You can find me just by my name on Instagram that has a link to my uh, business page on Instagram as well. You can find, I think it's uh, Thompson Insurance on Instagram as well. Um, I'm located here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Cheyenne and Torrey Pines are my major cross streets. Phone number here is 702-463-5200. Hey, thanks, Javon. Appreciate your time today. Most definitely. Thanks for having me, man. It's a, it's a pleasure, pleasure and an honor. I appreciate it.